SAP Business One is a complete business management application. That means not only do we handle customer relationship management, the sales ordering process, but you also handle the purchasing process from creating purchase requisitions, purchase orders, right through to the accounts payable invoice. What I'm gonna do is show you very, very quickly how you go from one of those documents all the way right through the entire purchasing process. So what do we do? Well, I'm gonna go in and this time, rather than using my common functions widget, I'm gonna show you how we do this from the menu. So you get an understanding that there are multiple ways of driving SAP Business One. So I go in here into purchasing, and I wanna start off by putting in a purchase request. Why? Well, different people might wanna request purchases, but then that doesn't necessarily mean you, they're gonna get those turned into a purchase order. So we've got a couple of different ways of handling it. So I'm gonna put in my purchase request. So. I'm going to say, all right, I'm Richard Duffy. I want to purchase some products. So I go in here into my items and I say, well, look, I actually need to purchase some tower cases. So I select a product and there it is. My required quantity, I actually need 10 of those. And then I can go in here and I can specify a required date. And I need those by the 27th of this month. So that's it. This is the price that I expect to pay I've also got other information I can put in as well, but fundamentally, that's it. That's my purchase request. So I'll say add. Now, one of the things you'll notice with SAP Business One, if you make a mistake, it flashes up a little red screen down the bottom and tells you specifically what did you do wrong. Well, I didn't specify a required date for the overall purchase request. So again, I can go in here and I can specify that I want the entire um, purchase request by the 27th. I go in here and I'll say add. Do you wish to update? Yes, I do. And now we'll commit that. So that purchase request has now been processed. Now what can happen? All those purchase requests can come into a central purchasing officer who can then go through, consolidate those purchasing requests or make a decision about which purchase requests are gonna be honored and which ones are gonna be rejected. Now the great thing with SAP Business One, which you'll see in a, a later demonstration, is there is a complete workflow engine sitting behind all of that. But right now, I'm just gonna handle this in a one-off fashion so here is the purchase request that has been created. So right now I'm the purchasing manager. I've decided, yep, I'm gonna create from that a purchase quotation. So what I can now do is I can create a purchase quotation and then send that out to my suppliers and get them all to quote on it. And then I receive back those quotations, compare them all inside the system and then decide which one I'm going to purchase from. Now with SAP, we also have an organization as part of our company group, which is known as Ariba. And they are, if you like, uh, a network for conducting transactions. What SAP Business One allows you to do, it allows you to take those purchase quotations and you can submit those uh, to the Ariba network, which allows potential suppliers to all retrieve your purchase quotation request. They can then quote on it send those back to you via the Ariba network and bring them into SAP Business One where you can choose which one you want. And then the successful bidder, you will raise a purchase order for them. I'm gonna jump straight to the purchase order process though here. So I'll choose purchase order. So I'm now taking this product and I'm gonna create a purchase order. So who do I wanna purchase it from? If I've purchased this before, and I've set a preferred vendor, that will automatically come up. But right now, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna purchase this product from one of my suppliers called Lasercom. So I select them and there it is. My contact person at Lasercom is Jimmy Miller. I want this product, I want 10 of them. Now they've actually quoted me a unit price of $15. So I can go ahead and override that unit price. That's it, it's automatically picking up the sales tax according to the way I've configured the system which I can override if I want, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and say add. That's now got my purchase order created. So, got a purchase order. Next step, well I need to send that purchase order out. Same scenario, I can go up here and click on the preview button. That will then take that purchase order and it will generate it for me in a printable format. But I can also send that purchase order out via EDI, I could take that purchase order, I can send it out via email. I have a number of different options there. 
And here you can see, here is our purchase order document. It's being prepared and it's ready for me to send out, okay? So that's just an example of what a purchase order document looks like. Uh, again, now that I've completed my purchase order, the next step is I would then copy that to a goods receipt purchase order or an accounts payable invoice. What's the difference? You might receive the goods, but then the invoice comes a few days later. Or you might receive the goods together with the invoice. If you receive the goods and the invoice comes later, then you'll do what we call a goods receipt PO. That's simple and easy. I simply go here and I say copy to goods receipt PO. And in this case, I'm just recording the goods receipt. I'll say add, and I'm automatically bringing in all 10. I'll say yes, I, don't, I understand that this is now committing accounting transactions, so that's fine, and that's now done. Let's say it's five days later and now the invoice has arrived. Well, very, very simply, I can call up that goods receipt PO and I can take that and I can turn that into accounts payable invoice. Of course, one of the key things here, I need to record the invoice number and that's all fine. I then say add. Again, accounting transactions being committed, and that's now done. My accounts payable invoice is in the system. So the great thing about this is we can now use these relationship maps as well that you may have seen in one of our other demonstrations. How does the relationship map work? Well, you can call up any one of those documents, the goods receipt PO, the accounts payable invoice, the purchase request, and you can see how that document flowed through the entire organization. How do I do that? I simply right click on this screen and I say, show me the relationship map. And there you can see, there are all the different transactions that were involved in this. So I went from a purchase request to a purchase order, to a goods receipt PO, to an accounts payable invoice. And that's got a little red line here indicating that that is as yet unpaid. So if I wanna drop down and look at any one of those, I can double click, opens up that document. One other thing I can also do is I can change the way I'm looking at those uh, relationship maps. And I can say, show me all the related items that were there. So now you can see, there you go, there's my accounts payable invoice and it had a tower case on there and I can double click on that and look at the underlying information for that tower case. And obviously if I had 10, 15 different items on that accounts payable invoice, you would see those 10 or 15 different items here. So that's the relationship map and that summarizes the entire purchasing process from purchase request to purchase order to accounts payable invoice.